Um, can you take us back? And I don't even want to say it's taking us back to last year because maybe it's a little bit further than that. But you are part of a very distinguished group that gets to hold the honor of being rookie of the year and, and being rookie of the year on a pro tour. So what was that whole journey like for you in terms of not only setting the goal and preparing for it, but ultimately achieving it? Oh my goodness. Um, you know, it was tear jerking at first because when they were announcing and I get goosebumps thinking about all of the previous winners, oh my gosh. And to have me yeah. be in that realm, like you said, it's, uh, wow. Um, I set the goal probably in 2015, 16, you know, when it first started, I thought, what if, what if that could be me? What if, um, you know, I could go out and compete the whole time? Could I? Could I actually compete against these girls? They're good. Mm -hmm. They're really good. Um, and then I saw the criteria that you had to compete in seven or less events. Maybe it might have been eight or less. And I was on the cusp. Mm -hmm. I think because with the U.S. Women's Open and I'd made a TV show at okay. one of my bowls like three or four previous women, US Women's Open, that was practically the only tournament that I did bowl. And then when I when I was on hiatus from working because I was Canadian and you know mm -hmm. the government was running my life and that's a very long story, so I'm not gonna share that now, but I had a period of time, a couple months where I was able to go out and compete in a couple of the events. So I knew how good these girl, these women, you know, I'm gonna call them girls, but they're women. Uh, I knew how good these girls were and I thought, you know, I'm going to go out and compete in the first four. And if I do well, if I, if I bowl to my potential and my, and my expectations, then I'm going to make enough money because it is also about sustaining sure. the, the ability to go out and bowl. I mean, it's not cheap. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I'm able to at least break even or make some money, um, and I'll go out and compete in the rest of the tour. And after the first four events, which I think I made it, three, I don't, I'm so bad with stats. I should keep better track and like memorize this stuff. But uh, I think I made three, you know, top, top 12 finishes. And I was like, wow, hmm, I think I have a chance to go out and do better, you know, in terms of uh, making top fours and possibly winning. And then when I, when they put out the first rankings for the rookie of the year and I was, you know, in the front, I was like, holy, holy crap, it's going to happen. <laughs> And, uh, and it's, it, it, it is, like you said, it's the power, or like we talked about earlier, it's the power of intention. Mm -hmm. If I work. Oh. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Uh, that was really funny. All right, hold on. Let me, let me bring you back up. <laughs> there you go. All right. Phew. That is hilarious. I swear I didn't touch anything. It's got to be the universe, you know, playing tricks. But anyway, you know what? They were like, Valerie, you're taking too long to answer the question. Hurry up. <laughs> That's all good. All good. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, to, to summarize and to like, to really put some um, emotion behind it and maybe some steps and because I did, I work hard. You know, I work and even coach Ty Rose, um, I'm working with him on writing a couple articles and I used to work with him on Team Canada. He even told me today, like, you work really hard off the lanes. And and as much as I, as I don't know, I never, I feel like I never give myself credit for that. I just, I always have like the next task that I'm working on and, and I, I really try not, I don't, maybe I need to sit more in with realizing that I work really hard and it was just hard work pays off. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't, I can't say that it was a fluke when I work my tail off. And to, to get yourself to that point, there's, there's such a big piece of it is that where, you know, that opportunity is there for you, right? We're not entitled to anything. Okay. But, but when that op when we get to create these opportunities and more importantly, it's about welcoming them, right? I talk so much about these six strategies for how we show up. The W 
is welcoming new opportunities. And when we open our mind and our heart and our soul to these kind of opportunities, these things get to present themselves to us, not because we're entitled to them, but because of the intentions we set in order to make those things happen. Mm, right? Amen. Yeah. So what does this year look like for you and the tour? I'm committing to it and I'm working even harder uh, to prepare for it. So it was, it was, I needed to make sure that my, so also I needed to make sure that my, before my business was all set that I, so that I could go out on tour. You know, I was, I didn't go out the previous year really because I wanted to build my practice and I wanted to be financially able to, um, you know, I don't like losing money. So I wanted to make sure that bowling was providing for itself. And then, you know, the rest of my business could, could help me go out and uh, compete. So it's actually even better now, I would say, because um, this year we're go. I'm coming to the whole thing except for one stop because my best friend is getting married and um, gotta, gotta go to her wedding. Gotta be there. Gotta her Absolutely. Wedding. Yep. So, um, but to start, I'm actually, the, later today, I'm having a, a planning call with my, my roommate this year, uh, Felicia Wong. She's a fellow Canadian. And we're planning to drive from Calgary down to Tucson up to Spokane, down to Sacramento, over to Vegas. We're driving through, wow. you know, God's country. And yeah. so I cannot, I, I mean, just the last year, because it was so on a whim, you know, whimsical, is that the right word? Uh, I didn't really plan to travel, like to sightsee except for Sacramento or Sonoma County last year. But this year, like we're actually planning and I'm planning to work around the tour. Like I'm going to have, and maybe I'll have to talk to you a little bit <laughs> with <laughs> my balance in terms of like <laughs> planning to sightseeing, planning to check in with my clients and my coaches and, you know, make sure my business is okay. And then shutting all of that off while I'm competing, which thankfully so many of my clients are bowlers that last yeah. year was so awesome. I mean, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm just going to tear up because they're so they think that I support them, but my gosh, do they support me? It's incredible. Well, that's, and that's the power we, we just so appreciate about coaching, right? Is that we're there for our clients and we also find out they're there for us too, in some ways, which makes it really, really nice. Um, you know, we don't, we don't do this because we do this because we love it. You know, it's all about service and how we get to show up in those kind of moments. And it's it's great that that you've been able to carve out such a wonderful niche and and to provide that kind of service, but to work with bowlers who who know and understand the support, then there's a whole different level of appreciation when they they're watching bowl TV or they, you know, happen to turn on the CBS sports and see a TV show or they're following online. They get to see all those kind of things, which just makes that connection even deeper, which is really nice. Yeah, anytime you know you're traveling on the road or whatever, <laughs> we, we could pop on and do another Facebook Live from the from the road. I, I do, I do want to, I do want to just put a spotlight on this for a second because for people who are maybe not as knowledgeable about the pro, the the PWBA, the pro tours and things like that. Can you just walk us through, like, when does the event start and, and how many games you're bowling in the course of a weekend and then rushing off to the next stop? Can you just give us a really quick picture of that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Last, so this year they've actually decided to cut it back by two games per block. Mm -hmm. And so now it's going to be starting on Thursday. We're going to have an hour and a half practice session. Yeah. Okay. And we, you know, get to bowl on the pattern. We don't get to know the pattern before that time. Right. And once we practice, then, you know, then it's time to drill balls if you need to. The next morning, you know, it's an early-ish morning start. I don't actually know what time it's going to start. But, you know, last year it was 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. We, we would bowl eight games. But now we're going to bowl six games, break for a little bit, six more. And then they make the cut to the top 32. And you bowl six more games. And then they could cut to the top 12, you will, I believe it's six more games and then cut to the top four. And then there's a, you know, bowl, either bowl TV or CBS sports final. So, and so that's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and 
then I'm unfortunately, I have a lot of people ask, but I'm not able to bowl on the regional tour right. because I'm in the elite field, yeah. you know, top, top 24. And so my roommate though is going to bowl the regionals. Mm -hmm. And so then that's on Sunday and then we get the scoot off to the, the next stop yeah. that's going to be on the thursday and you start all over all over again and so so point being made here valerie is that if if you you're, you're bowling the main event and you make it through all the rounds and you're seated third or fourth for the show and you run the step ladder if i did my math right it's 27 games over the course of two days not counting the practice you had on thursday or any of the practice balls you had in between leading up to the the blocks and things like that correct yes and last year i believe i counted i bowled at least 30 plus games mm -hmm. in multiple weekends and oh my gosh it was so hard on my body so hard that i'm taking what i learned and i'm in the gym i'm working with heather dorico and bullfit mm -hmm. and she's got a um a program and we're doing some things that are so specific to getting stronger for bowling that um i'm you know i'm just doing what i can to make sure that i prepare better because i was carrying my foam roller around which i actually i think i have it in the back yeah. here to make sure that my body held up and yeah. thank goodness uh i know a little bit about what i'm talking about with with fueling mm -hmm. my body because i feel like those high inflammatory foods would not have served me while i was on tour and now yeah no absolutely i mean that's that's why that's why you're an athlete, right? And we don't and we don't diminish that in any way, shape, or form, right? So